आज मैं लाल किले से एक महत्वपूर्ण निर्णय की घोषणा करना चाहता हूं इस विषय के जो जानकार हैं वो बहुत लंबे अरसे से इसकी मांग करते रहे हैं आज हमने निर्णय किया है कि अब हम चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ सी इसकी व्यवस्था करेंगे और इस पद के गठन के बाद तीनों सेनाओं के शीर्ष स्तर पर एक प्रभावी नेतृत्व मिलेगा Hello and welcome to the National Security Conversation. On our Independence Day this year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the creation of the much pending position of the Chief of Defence Staff, a demand that has been raised for a very very long time in the Indian context. It's a very bold and a much needed decision by the government. The question however is how is the government going to implement it? Will the CDS have real powers or will it be a ceremonial post? can the cds function effectively without the proper integration of the armed forces and tri service theater commands i think these are questions that need to be answered and to answer these very important questions i have two very distinguished guests with me in the studio and my guests are lieutenant general satish dua and air vice marshal arjun subramaniam lieutenant general satish dua who we have interviewed in the past retired as the chief of integrated defense staff to the chairman chief of staff committee in october 2018 just a year ago actually uh, as the core commander of the 15 core based in jammu and kashmir general dua was one of the architects of the much celebrated surgical strikes of 2018 my second guest is air vice marshal arjun subramaniam arjun subramaniam is a retired fighter pilot of the indian air force a military historian who is currently a visiting professor at the ashoka and jindal universities He has been a visiting professor at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy and a visiting fellow at the Harvard Asia Center and a visiting fellow at the Oxford University. He is the author of the much celebrated book India's Wars: A Military History 1947 to 1971. Welcome to the NSC General Dua and AVM Subramaniam. Thank you. General Dua, if I may begin this conversation with you, how do you evaluate and see the creation of the Chief of Defense Staff? um and as announced by the prime minister this year it is yet to be created what are the implications of this particular decision or the history of this particular decision uh i'd like to begin by saying happy that this is an unfinished step of a larger decision that was taken in 2001 right as you are aware after kargil war we had several review uh, several reviews and committees and uh, the group of ministers uh recommendations group led by mr arbani that recommendations were accepted nearly in total and all these tri service structures and some were created and certain other changes were made in the integrating the ministry of defense out of which ids was created only one step of appointing the cds uh, was left out for some reason it has taken us 18 years thereafter for creation of this post you are right it's a bold step but i would just like to put it in the perspective that it this is a carry over of that decision so now i think this is going to complete the picture and this single one step is a big game changer and it is going to be uh, uh, you know a force multiplier for the three armed forces provided we roll it out right we think through things and develop a correct model uh, for our armed forces broadly speaking <coughs> what are the major changes that uh, have come about or are required if my count is right 66 or 67 countries have made changes to their structures military structures and higher defense organization after world war 2 we are the last major military standing alone each service in a separate in a separate service silo having said that now what is required is integration at a higher defense organization level beyond the military and integration between the militaries between the uh, three services at a higher defense organization level we have to integrate better we have to have better integration between the ministry with other instruments of power and ministry of defense between the ministry of defense and the armed forces what i wish to say is that 
big changes are required there. When we have a CDS, once, there, once uh, 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 a CDS is appointed, he will be a single point advice. He will represent the three services in all apex bodies. When he gives single point advice, he will be able to enmesh better with the higher defense organization and then slowly create structures how we go about, uh, that will be a phased manner, how we go about integrating. You mentioned theater commands. Theater commands are there in almost all, in fact, all major militaries. We have to have theater commands, but it is not as if it can come tomorrow. It has to take time. That's a leadership call. But having a CDS is the first step to moving towards jointness. Well, for General Dua, um, AVM, General Dua seems to say that this is a game changer. In fact, you wrote a piece in the Hindu um, last month. You were very optimistic about the whole um, appointment or the announcement regarding the appointment. What is your take? Is it a game changer or is, is, that, is, is, that, is that not how you think about it? No, no, I, I, would endorse, I would endorse the phrase of a game changer. But I'm looking at a game changer perspective from, uh, from a different angle, okay? I have always been a very strong proponent of the Indian political establishment involving themselves and being more aware of matters military. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This has not mm -hmm. happened in the past. Because the structures that we've created for ourselves since, since independence isolate the military from the political establishment as well as from civil society. Okay? Now, the CDS, the creation of the CDS is reflective of a greater political involvement in matters military over the last few years. And there seems to be a greater political awareness of matters military. That's why the Modi government, I think, has bitten the bullet of straight away appointing a CDS and not a chairman chiefs of staff committee, which was what? the three service chiefs recommend, recommended. Okay. Now, there are many who feel that political interference in matters military is not advisable or is not good in a democracy. But I would argue that political involvement is essential if the military is to be used correctly as a tool of statecraft. Okay. And therefore, I see the CDS as a critical interface between the military and the political establishment in the realm of increasing awareness and improving communication between the military and the political establishment, that is one. But that can only happen if the CDS is given the right responsibility and the right hierarchical position to be a single point advice to the political establishment about matters military. I think that's a very interesting point, General Dua. Will the CDS be first among the equals or is, that, is he going to be um, holding a rank higher than the chiefs? Um, and and you've, been, you've been part of some of this decision making in the past. How do you think the government should go about um, um, creating that particular post? And the hierarchy question that uh, AVM raised. Yes, so <clears throat> uh, there are two things. One is whether he's going to be whether he's going to be first among equals as the chairman chief right. of staff is and you know with, with the three between the three chiefs right. or is he going to be above them first let me clarify one thing somebody can be uh, made above a certain position without giving a rank and status without giving a rank for instance uh, i would argue that he need not be a five star general or admiral uh, he could he could still be higher in hierarchy as it happens, let's say in the U.S. <coughs> or U.K. some other countries as well. That is a leadership call, but <coughs> chief of defense staff has to be by by definition and necessity not first among equals. He has to be above the three service chiefs. It may take a while for him to attain that mandate because we are appointing one now and it may take some while. But otherwise, to be meaningful in interfacing with the other instruments of power, to be meaningful in giving correct advice to the leadership, single point military advice, and to be meaningful in terms of drawing better integration and modernization and operational issues within the military when we come to operational also, he has to be above the status of the three service chiefs. Abhim, how do you see that? Because you raised that issue. Um, in terms of rank, in terms of hierarchy, where do you think the government should place the CDS? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, while, uh, while the broader uh, environment today will suggest that 
he ought to be a first amongst equals. But for him to actually really make an impact, uh, I think he's got to, uh, over a period of time, uh, be seen as somebody who is, uh, you know, who, who, who's probably uh, senior to the uh, three service chiefs. I think this this conversation is probably about the rank is probably important because the government has not yet made up its you know, but, mind. But I, but, but I would like to caution one, you know. We are extremely rank conscious, hierarchical in our entire system. And I think we need to grow out of that. And therefore, to my mind, the impact of the CDS is not so much about being first of equals. It is as to what value the CDS brings to the table by virtue of the competencies that he provides or the advice that he provides the political leadership. Jandua, a question about the implication of this. Now, will do you think this will bring about a lot more joinmanship among the three services? Will the CDS create more joinmanship? Yes. We have already embarked on this journey of joinmanship over the last 17, 18 years. Hmm. Not providing that one man, that appointment, a boss uh, of uh, IDS, having a rotational like I held that post for having a rotational chairman as, as your head <clears throat> doesn't serve the purpose very well because he is saddled with so many other responsibilities. Whoever is the chairman, uh, chief staff committee, is saddled with running his own force. And today when we don't have theatre command, so he is also saddled with being the operational commander as well as the chief of staff. Coming to your question about how he will create more jointness. <clears throat> Firstly, he takes under command now. He will obviously take under command now all the tri-service structures of which IDS is the service headquarters, whether it is Andaman Nicobar Command. Now, for example, the SFC, the Strategic F uh, Forces Command, he will be able to play a more meaningful role mm. as heading the IDS. He will be able to sit on the high table, provide meaningful inputs from the, as far as the Strategic Force Command is concerned. Then there are a host of other tri-service establishments which are under IDS now. In addition to that, there are several tri-services establishment uh, which are not under IDS, but then that without getting into detail, you know, whether it is NCC or DGQA or DGFMS, they, all that can come under his umbrella now, rightfully so. But the larger point is that he has to take more effective charge, force modernization in a more meaningful manner. Today, decisions that are taken by chief of staff committee, whenever it comes to let us say come through divergence if not disagreement, uh, those decisions are, you can, are unable to take very strong decisions. So wherever required, he can give a more meaningful thrust uh, to force modernization. Developing country that as India is, we need to prioritize between our requirements and sometimes uh, we are at you know uh, disagreement within the three services. He will also be able to now take very effective control of the new structures that have been uh, sanctioned by the government less than a year ago. And I am referring to the cyber and the space and the armed forces special operation division because they are under ideas. These are the operations of tomorrow. In fact, mm. th we are already a little late in these structures in cyber and space. The world has gone ahead. Look at the amount of investment and I am not talking of money only. Look at the amount of investment that US or China is doing in cyber and space. These are the things that, that are going to be calling the shots even sometimes more than the missiles and the tanks uh, in times to come. So these structures that are being raised will be under CDS. He will also then have to draw a blueprint, a phased plan as to how we achieve more and more integration. We would start perhaps, my take is we would start perhaps by, by identifying areas where we can operate together. There are a lot of areas where there are gaps and overlaps, uh, uh, gaps and overlaps we were discussing a little while ago. For example, in air defense, I, I, as an army man, I would feel that air force is better place to mm -hmm. take a overall, uh, do we require a national air defense command or some such structure? Air force is better place to do that. There are so many, all the three services are flying aircrafts of all sizes for serving the same troops. Right. We are all having UAVs, we, two of us are having attack captors. There is, there is a requirement to synergize. Somewhere we can cut out the overlaps, somewhere we can integrate our capabilities. That is a big blueprint that he can draw. It will also lead to, apart from enhancement of our combat potential of each service, for a developing country like India, this is more important that it will also lead to a loss of resource optimization, which can be put to better use for, for modernization. 
So having said that, the last sentence I would say on this is he would, that is the CDS would draw up a plan uh, on a timeline basis as to when can we get to the ultimate. That ultimate of let us say we are going to have theta commands, it may come after 5 years or 10. Now that is a leadership call. We will also by then have to see when are the resources enough that we can do that kind of a thing. So there, there are so many things that will, uh, so many factors that will go into that planning. But here is a man who has to start drawing up that plan and start discharging the duties that we discussed earlier. General, the question is, is this person going to be a planner or a commander? Because the fear in the civilian mind could potentially be, and this is a very pedestrian understanding of things, that here is a man who has under his command three armed forces, I mean three, three, three arms of the armed forces, and that's a lot of people. Uh, so, and that one person commands all of these people. So, should the, should, the, should the civilians be concerned about it? Very good question, and I'm, I'm glad you asked me in this manner. First of all, in the structure that is envisaged eventually or even now, he does not, I will repeat that, he does not take absolute charge of all three forces by himself. He does not become the CNC of the World War II days. Those days were different. Now, if you, whether you take uh, US or UK, their models, I am sure we have to make a model that suits us, not them. Even if you take China, which is now in the foreign yeah. dimensions, work in progress, 2015 right. they started this process. Right. They have integrated their structures in such a manner. So, I am just coming to the point how we might evolve our structure. That the CDS is not the operational commander of all three. In fact, eventually the Army, Navy, Air Force chiefs are also not the operational commanders of their entire command. When we say theater commands, mm -hmm. what happens is that the theater commander, which is an integrated structure of all three uh, for a particular theatre will be operationally responsible for that. Like the SFC for example. Yes. Uh, for example, today in our country, if URI happens, army chief has to go there, take stock and come back to Delhi. If INS Betwa falls down, the navy chief has to go there. My point is, when there is a theatre commander, then theatre commander is accountable operationally. He is accountable to the leadership. And that's what I, So now where does CDS come in? CDS is here. He is here only to give a single point military advice. He is here only to uh, look at the force modernization etc. between the three services. Within the services, the chiefs will do it. He is there also as a part of that single point military advice if, if required. Maybe for a particular situation or context, reallocate forces temporarily between one theatre to another depending on the context or situation. He does those larger things. He does not directly command all of the three forces operationally to become like a thread that you started off by saying that coup and things like that. So, more of a planner than someone who actually commands troops? No, he is, yes, he, he does the right kind of single point military advice, but in operational, his, his contribution to the operational scenario is in terms of uh, switching resources if required. And if I may just add here, because it becomes easier to understand, who is CDS? He can't be one man. He is one man holding that appointment, but he has advisors, his principal advisors will be one, one uh, three star general from each, uh, general or a marshal or admiral. He is not a man in isolation. He may have enough experience. In times to come, he, these will be the people who would have had enough experience in tri-services organization and a better understanding of the tri-service environment. But he will be advised by all these three services. So, that is the way uh, to see him, no, not right. as an absolute commander who becomes, you know, the Viceroy and the CNC in Supreme India. Commander of the no, they used, to have lot of, they used to have a lot of problems here. The CNC in India and the Viceroy had a lot of problems. In fact, Ministry of Defense in its today's form uh, has actually come about because of their initial problems. AVM, you wanted to come in on that. See, yeah. there is, I mean, uh, to, to, to add to that question. Uh, I, would be a little, I would be a little more direct and say that this alarm is absolutely unfounded. Okay. The alarm is unfounded A because I do not think there is an understanding of the ethos of the Indian military. Okay. Uh, I do not think there is an understanding of the fact that, uh, that military operations today and orchestration of military forces are based on centralized command and distributed control. 
it is not centralized command and centralized control. Today no country can afford centralized command and centralized control. To cope with the changing nature of war, armed forces across the world have progressed to a concept of centralized command and distributed control. When you have distributed control, you cannot have an anarchy or you cannot have somebody from within that distributed control organization to seize power. So, I think it is absolutely unfounded okay. and comes from uh, maybe insufficient understanding of contemporary conflict and structures. Absolutely. During World War II and during the age of the big battle, it was centralized command, yes. centralized control. You cannot afford such a a AVM, um, you wrote in the Hindu in August yeah. and I am reading out a paragraph. Yeah. The demands and challenges confronting a CDS will be of the kind that the military leadership has never faced before. Balancing national interests, shedding his own service affiliations and looking after the interest of all the three services will always be a tough act. He must also have the world view and pot political awareness necessary to engage with diverse stakeholders. As seen from the western experience, this will happen only after years of joint service assignments and exposure to working with government yep. and educational interludes in a military career. Are you suggesting that the CDS, the post of CDS at this point of time without a change in the culture and structure of the Indian Armed Forces will not be very effective? Is that the conclusion? I stand, by, I stand by every word of what I have written and I am quite certain that unless the Indian military restructures intellectually, the CDS cannot be an effective interface between the military and the government. And I, and I say this. Uh, and what are some of those things that need to be done in, yeah, in order for? You, you know, you know the thing is that a, uh, the CDS has to, from say, a colonel's rank onwards, have to have tenanted numerous joint service assignments. Okay. At the colonel, one star, two star level. That potential officer has to acquire a world view not by staying within the confines of India, but he should be given the exposure to travel across the world, to, to, to engage in academic endeavor at the best institutions in the world and one must look at it as a means of empowering the military. Now, I think there is, I think there is a lurking fear within the, within the larger Indian establishment what are the ramifications of empowering the military intellectually and that is a fear I think that is again unfounded. You need an em intellectually empowered military to act as a significant tool of statecraft. And I think education, joint service establishment, world view, ability to engage with other militaries, these are absolute essentials for an effective CDS. And that is interesting. So, you are saying this is a great beginning, but let us not really stop here. There is a lot more that needs yeah, to be done, yeah, yeah. structurally and fundamentally. Um, uh, General Dua, you have headed the ideas in the past. How do you expect the civilian bureaucracy in the country to respond to a post like CDS? The civilian bureaucracy, I am not talking about the general public and their perceptions of it. Um, what are some of, what would be some of their concerns and um, do you think the CDS will be able to deal with the entrenched interest of the bureaucrats in the, in, in, in the defense ministry to begin with? Apart from, you know, the integration that I spoke of between the MOD and that, and I will come to that separately, I do not see any um, uh, friction or any uh, dissonance in the role that CDS will acquire as of now. In fact, Interestingly, there is something that which is less talked of will get covered or will get taken care of by this post of CDS. Today, responsibility for, responsibility for war fighting is with the three chiefs. It is their responsibility for war fighting, isn't it? Under the chairman, chairman is one of them. But responsibility of equipping them, and I am just using simpler words, otherwise capability development. Is actually, the, is actually the responsibility of Ministry of Defence. Right. Now, that is actually placing two things, responsibility and accountability is with two different places. Yeah. You need to put them under one head. That is what CDS will do. Once CDS is there, only in this case, take a, mod, take a leaf out of the UK system, the Chief of Defence staff is, will, will be responsible and should be responsible for Defence of India. He will also be responsible for capability building and modernization of all three services. And 
by whichever model that comes about, some of it which we were discussing, operational and uh, all the distributed control, he will be then also responsible for operations in part. Mm -hmm. So we are actually putting all the right things in, in, one, in one silo. As far as the bureaucracy is concerned, they continue to have their own functions. There are five secretaries in Ministry of Defence. Uh, we will not talk about the ex-servicemen welfare, the DRDO are slightly different. But DRDO will also have a better interface with CDS, now being able to give a better direction to the DRDO as to what is the field that we need to look at in, an, in a more coherent manner rather than three services approaching them separately. There will be a little more convergence. Then. Secretary uh, of Defense Production is a separate thing which, which goes hand in hand but the fact is that again he will be able to provide a little better coordination only. There is no, everyone continues to, continues with their role. The uh, finance wing remains. The Department of Defense which is headed by Defense Secretary also continues in his own function. The CDS is not really taking away any of his uh, role and charter except for bringing in actually a better interface. Because he, he now deals with one person if there is a military advisory. But the defense secretary ha will obviously deal with all th three service chiefs as well. It is only in an, any apex meeting for the three uh, services, it will be the CDS who will be there, the single point military advice. So we are giving a unified advice and that, that is going to be the difference. With Ministry of Defense, I do not see any friction. However, like I said earlier, there we have to have a better integration. For instance, IDS, headquarter IDS and ministry should really, I use the word not integrated, they should be amalgamated. Yes. Only then, after all, in the original recommendations, there is a post called JS International in IDS, an MEA officer. There is a director international under him, a direct level post from MEA. Only JS International has been filled up once. There was one Dr. Jain Mishra uh, 10 years ago. He was there and after that the post has never been filled by an IFS officer. There is a scientific advisor from DRDO who is there already. There is a financial advisor who is there. That thing. So, IDS is actually organized very well. Some of the appointments have been suppressed and not been filled up. Similarly, the Ministry of Defence, I think better amalgamation will act as a force multiplier to the Defen Department of Defence and I mean it, to the Ministry of Defence while I was working with them on, on matters that they needed our advice and on some subjects that we collaborated together, it was, uh, it was a very beautiful experience to work with them. So, uh, but right now it is more personality oriented. The moment it is, the structures are made in such a manner, it will be a win-win situation for both, for Ministry of Defence as well as for the Defence Forces. Do you think the Defence Ministry and the Defence Secretary will need to cede some space and powers to the Chief of Defence Staff as and when the post is established? You know, it's, again, uh, I don't want to look at this through the prism of a power struggle. That is good optics. To talk about, to talk about a power struggle is excellent optics. But I would like to look at it from the view of synergizing capability towards national security. And here again, I think political guidance to this entire process of integration is very, very important. The politician must tell the defense secretary and the CDS directly saying that, look, I do not want any dilution of capability because of turf wars, period. Hmm. Sort, your, sort, sort the matters out. And let us head towards the correct direction, which is let us converge towards better national security. That kind of a direction would allow these turf issues to be sorted out amicably. And let, let me tell you also another thing. Friction and disruption are essential. Friction is essential. Mm -hmm. For any new idea to evolve, mm -hmm. there will be friction. We have to manage that friction. Right. Right. Well, and political direction in managing that friction is more important then friction being managed from a bottoms up approach. Yeah, we have a slightly different kind of talking about friction. Yeah. Uh, let me let me draw your attention to a slightly different kind of friction. Some offices in the IAF have opposed the idea of CDS and theater commands. I think if I'm not mistaken, Air Marshal Krishna Swami and uh, Vinod Patni have written mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. What is the source of this resistance? I grew in service during this period of friction. Right. Okay. Uh, through the, you know, through the 2000s and the 2010. And at that time when the friction emerged, the friction more was out of a sense of 
you know, uh, I know a lot of Air Force guys will pounce on me, but I will say at that time, it was more out of fear. Fear of being subsumed by this huge gorilla in the room, which is the Indian Army. Okay. But over a period of time, this resistance or this apprehension for theater commands and CDS was more out of a sense of a real absence of resources to be able to support the structure. And that continues to be, that continues to be one of the points of friction even right now, that there is no way in which the Indian Air Force with 30 fighter squadrons can support an expansive theater command concept. So, the Air Force has moved along. No longer is the Air Force resistant to the concept of the CDS integration and things like that. But the Air Force's argument is, let's move incrementally, please look at resource constraints and let's look at joint planning rather than joined planning. Because right now what we still have to a certain extent is joined planning. It needs to be joint planning and I think the CDS will go a long way in accelerating this process of joint planning and integration of capability before we move to structures. Maybe just, just for the sake of our, our viewers, yeah. when you say that uh, there is this fear in the Indian Air Force, you are saying the fear, there, the fear is about, the fear was about yeah. spreading the resources too thin. Yeah. That's what it it's is. It's still there. The fear is of spreading resources thin. Earlier on, you know, in the sense, after all, let's be very, uh, let's be very honest, okay. The Indian Army is 1.25 million strong, okay. The Indian Army has borne the brunt of a number of national security challenges since independence, okay. The Air Force and the Navy are emerging tools of military war fighting that are increasingly potent as years have gone by. But they still remain small in size. Size does matter. Uh, General Dubai, you said earlier on in your answer that uh, today we have to think about other domains of war, um, space um, and other, other related domains. Now you are hearing um, this, this so called fear about the army centrism in the Indian scheme of things. How do you sort of respond to uh, this sort of a view about the army centrism and then how these resources will get spread uh, far too thin in, in theatre command? So, um Firstly, let me just address it like Arjun very candidly put it. Let me just talk about the, the emotional or the mental part of it. He is right about army being the big gorilla in the room, right? So the fact is, it is our size by virtue of our requirement. And so it is incumbent on the Indian army as a big and, or a very big brother size wise to both Air Force and the Navy to set their fears at rest. To make sure that they do not have any misgivings and wherever they are, we must address them if need be by giving more concessions than required also on, on whatever level they are. So let me rest that part there. As far as allocation, uh, as far as resources are concerned, I have a very slight point of difference with Arjun and I wouldn't like to, wouldn't like to drag my feet on that, let's not get tactical. But the point is, yes, today we have less resources. Maybe we are not doing these, we are not getting to theatre commands in a hurry in any case. So we will certainly do it once we have, we may not go up to 45, no. we may not wait till 45 squadrons to do that, but somewhere better than today. And secondly, the way we are uh, structured today to uh, shift uh, our resources from one theatre to another, without calling the theatre, I suppose similarly, Air Force is the fastest in mobility amongst the three services, so it can readjust. So, I, I just leave it at that. However, allow me to just take uh, 30 seconds on what he said earlier, which is a very good point he made about the friction, that in our friction, whether it is with the uh, structures, with MOD and outside the MOD, or amongst us between the three services, in our friction, we should not create an appointment. Since we are creating a new appointment, we should not create an appointment which is uh, not well empowered or it is hollowed out sort of an appointment. We should give it a strong mandate. We should put our heads together. Like I said, it is question of now it is as a national, when there is war, all political parties get together, do not they? And this is a preparation for war. Everyone must come together to create a strong institution of CDS and uh, otherwise, 
we should not have a uh, you know a, a weak minimum uh, um, right, uh, right. that um, common minimum program kind of a uh, this thing please remember right. that like he brought out the uh, the three services have always been recommending a permanent chairman right. naresh chandra task force said a permanent chairman while arun uh, arun singh sorry task force and group of ministers by mr advani did recommend a cds of late the talk has been about permanent chairman the proposal here also was permanent chairman but the prime minister announced a cds it's a significant step and this is not casual so here's the leadership telling us we need a cds and i am so glad it's cds because had we gone on to a permanent chairman i don't know who would have taken the next bold step so we have a cds in place let him make us make him a strong potent cds who can then make a difference both in the higher on the higher table and for the services eventually here it will be eventually there immediately and like he said expand his intellectual horizon not only his of the leadership overall only then there will be cdss coming up from them we need to expand that they can play a meaningful part in the national security strategy and then slowly as time passes for various reasons integrate the three services better I also saw this debate doing rounds about how the CDS should be selected. Should that be the senior most officer, or should it be from a panel of senior most officers within the armed forces? You know, you wanted to say something else, did you? Yeah. Uh, let me first answer yeah. this particular question of yours. I think during the I think during the initial years, in order to carry out a deep selection of the CDS, you need to create a large enough pool of empowered individuals who can. Uh, who can tenet that post so i think that process will take a few more years i wanted to end on a positive i wanted to end on a positive note uh, i must share with you a conversation i had with a very very senior bureaucrat just a few days ago and you know what he told me he told me i am very impressed with the synergy that exists between the three service chiefs during my tenure recently and this is as good a time as any to push integration now that coming from somebody very very senior in the in the, in the bureaucracy i think augurs well for the momentum that can be given to the post of the cds jana do i any any last word on the selection uh, question that i asked well i totally agree with what arjun said that initially as to my way of looking at things initially it might be better for a couple of tenures at least it might be better to get one of the chiefs or a chief ranking material officer to be doing this before we get on to a broad base a bit a selection from amongst the all the cncs that's what you mean perhaps exactly. so that might happen later but for the present i would i would agree with him for exactly the, i i endorse that jan do a wonderful talking to you thank you thank you thank you avm wonderful thank talking you. to you thank you To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon pay to support independent journalism click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay